I'm Rebecca from Hoff Math, and I'm going to show you how I teach graphing the sine and cosine functions. So when I'm teaching the graphs of the sine and the cosine, I will go through a PowerPoint presentation, and I'm going to link this PowerPoint presentation um, underneath the video here. And then I give the students blank trig graph paper, and I'll have a link to that too as well in the video description. And I'll actually have the students take the time to label their graph paper. The reason I give the graph paper unlabeled is because I want them to know that sometimes they need to change their scale. So maybe like in this one, every grid line is pi over four, but sometimes you need to go by multiples of pi. Then we'll go through the connection between the uh, unit circle and the graph. So we do that. We talk about max and min. We talk about a periodic function. Uh, we talk about the period, the amplitude, cosine. Uh, is the same thing. We go through these things uh, as far as domain range, period, etc. Basically, this whole lesson takes, you know, like I, I do it in two class periods. And then we'll do some technology here um, with just some Desmos exploration with, with some sliders that they get to explore. And then we will go back from the sliders and we'll summarize what we found um, from the sliders. Then we'll come here to where we're just practicing the analyzation of the graph based off of our findings here from the technology exploration. So we do a couple of those examples. Uh, this is a good one. Well, they just analyze, but I don't give them clues on what they're looking for. And then we start sketching. But what I really want to do is this example right here, because this one is more challenging. So we're going to sketch two periods of the graph. So what we do is we start with the analyzation that we did before. So we want to find the amplitude and the period and the phase shift and the vertical translation. So for this one, the amplitude is going to be a half. The period is going to be 2 pi divided by 2, which is pi. The phase shift is going to be, remember that was C over B. So 2 pi divided by 2, so that's going to be pi, and it is going to go to the right. And then for the vertical translation, that's going to be down 1. I do allow my students to say negative 1 or down 1, and if they say negative 1 down, it is redundant, but I don't penalize them because I don't think that they think that they're actually doing like a double negative. So once we do that, then we take the time to set up a t-table. So here's how I set up my t-tables. We're going to set up five key points. Now this is a cosine function. So the cosine function, when we look at the mother function, it always starts high and then it goes to the middle, and then it goes low, and then it goes back to the middle, and then it ends high. So we're just looking at one cycle of this particular cosine function. The amplitude and the vertical translation, those that affects the graph vertically. And then the period and the phase shift, those affect the graph horizontally. The vertical one is easier to do, so let's start there. So we know that if we've gone down one, well, that's going to be the axis that the graph is going to oscillate about. So that means that the midline is going to be at negative 1. Then our amplitude is a half, so that means that from our midline of negative 1, our high is going to be a half a unit up from negative 1. So that's going to be negative a half for the high that goes there and there. And then the low is going to be a half below the negative 1. So it's going to be negative 3 halves. Now for the x, here's what you're going to do. You're going to do the phase shift. It's going to start here at the beginning. So we're moving pi to the right, so I'm just going to put a pi right there. Then the ending point here is going to be the phase shift plus the period. So our phase shift was pi, and it's going to end at the period. So pi plus another pi, that's going to be 2 pi for the ending point. Now for the three values in the middle, there's a couple things that you could do. One of them is that you just keep averaging and then averaging. So but halfway between pi and 2 pi is going to be pi and a half, or 3 pi over 2. And then halfway between pi and 3 pi over 2 is going to be 5 pi over 4. And then halfway between 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi is going to be 7 pi over 4. So that's one option. That's usually what I do. The other thing that you can do to find those increments is you just take the period and you divide by 4 because it's going to go every 4. So the period was pi divided by 4. So you can see that to get from pi to 5 pi over 4, we just added pi over 4 because the period was pi. So period divided by 4, that would be in this case pi over 4. And then 5 pi over 4 plus another pi over 4 takes you to 3 pi over 2. And the 3 pi over 2 plus another pi over 4, 7 pi over 4, and so on and so forth. So that's another way that you can get those x values. So now, once we have our table filled out, I don't give my students a pre-labeled 
grid. I really don't give them a grid at all. I just have them do it all freehand. So I kind of look at this and I say, okay, horizontally, I just have to show from pi to two pi. And of course, if I needed to show two periods or two cycles, of, oh, it does say two periods here. So we'll do that. So I can go from, um, I can go from pi to maybe out to three pi, or I can also sort of back up and go from zero to pi. That might be easier. So I'll do that. So I know that I need to show zero to two pi and I need to have, go by fourth, for example. So let's just say if two pi is going to be out there, then I'm just going to back it up and do like pi right there. And then that's going to be pi over two, three pi over two is going to be there. And then we're going to have, you know, halfway, halfway, just sort of mark out my increments. So I just sort of do it as I go. And then for my vertical, I see that my uh, lowest vertical point is negative three and a half, or sorry, negative three halves. And then my highest is negative half. So you know, we can sort of stretch it out if we want to. So maybe I put negative a half right there, negative one right there, uh, negative three halves right there. So now we start plotting points. So at pi, I'm at negative a uh, half. And then at five pi over four, I'm down to negative one. Three pi over two, negative three halves. Seven pi over four, back to negative one. Okay, so those are the first, the f five main points from my T table. And then, like I said, I could continue off to the right and just continue that pattern going out to three pi, or you can sort of work backwards. So that's what I'm gonna do here. So working backwards, I can figure that the next one, that was a high, so then I have to be at the middle, and then I have to be low, and then I have to be back at the middle, and then I'm gonna have to be back at the high point there on zero. And then connect the dots. We wanna make it look more like U's and less like V's. It's not pretty, I am drawing on a computer, but that's basically it. Then I'll do an example where I give them the graph and they have to find the amplitude and the period and the phase shift and then they have to write an equation for it. And then that's the end of the lesson. I give the students lots of practice with this. If you like this video, please subscribe. Also, check out my website and my Facebook group. The links are below. I'm Hawk. Uh-huh. We're going to try this again. We're going to get it right. We're going to get it right.